Hi everyone, this is Jeff from the Front Range Community College Library. Today we're going to talk about how to use the database PubMed. And I have a link to it on our data on our uh, website under electronic databases. There's PubMed right there. And PubMed is a medical database only. So you should only be using this database if you're looking for medical articles. And they're all going to be very high level articles. Everything in here is going to be written at, at a professional level. And so just be aware of that. There's nothing in here that's going to be at a, at a basic level. But if that's the kind of information you want, if you're a student in these areas, then this would be a great database for you. Now, the link that I have on our website is going to go directly into PubMed's advanced search page because I think that the advanced search page is much easier to use than their general page. If you were to go online to PubMed just on its own, pubmed.gov, it's going to bring up this screen which looks a little bit differently and, and you can type in terms here and do searches but it's going, to, it's going to bring up so many articles that I think it's pretty overwhelming. If you want to just go in, if you're on the general page and go into the advanced search screen it'll take you to this screen that I have up here. So I'm going to close that one and we're just going to work in the advanced search. Now I'm going to, let's say I'm doing a search for diabetes articles. Now if I type this in there's going to be so many articles that come back because this is a huge database. I would probably over here in the all fields I would change this to a certain field. I would say maybe diabetes needs to be in the title of the articles. So diabetes has to be in the title. How about in the next box I type in obesity and I could say maybe this one doesn't have to be as specific. I could go to uh, mesh major topic. This is the medical sub medical su subject headings. So this is going to be the subject. So obesity has to be the major subject and diabetes has to be in the title. Now if I want to get a preview for how many articles are going to come back for that, I would click add to history. Now you don't have to do this, you could just do a search, but let me get an idea of what we're looking at here. If I click add to history, it adds it down here and gives me a preview of how many articles it's going to find. So it's going to find 4,252 articles. Now if we want, we can just go in there and or we could say maybe we could change some things up here so that we're saying, well, maybe that's that's too many articles. But if we click on this, and before you don't need to do that, what I just did, you could you could just do the search. Uh, but now that I have it down here, I'll click here just so we can see those articles. Okay, so we've got the 4,252 articles. Now, what we can do, maybe. Uh, one thing that's going to frustrate you with PubMed as opposed to some of the other databases, a lot of these articles, the full article is not here. The full text is not here. If you want to get the full text, what you can do is click right over here on the left hand side. Free full text available. Full text available and if you hit free full text available, it's full text available and free full text. It'll, it'll give you any full text. So if I click there, it's going to tell us how many of these are full articles. So of those 3,000, of the over 3,000 were not full text. So we're down to 1,000 full text articles. That makes it a lot less daunting. There's other <coughs> limits we could put on this if you would like. Let's say, let's limit this just to articles about humans. Because there's articles about animals in here too. That took, that took about 150 articles off there. So about 150 of those were had to do with animals. And let's say, a clinical trial if you want to see some actual original research on this or maybe you want to see a review. Now a review is nice if you're writing a paper because this kind of gives you a summary of all the information that's out there or maybe you're in a class that's asked specifically for clinical trials but if we click there we could that's going to limit it down just to clinical trials. Let's see how so now we're down to 128 so that huge search becomes manageable pretty quickly so we're now down to a pretty good pretty good range of articles here. Let me uh, click on this first one here. Okay, so it brings up brings up their, their citation for this. Now you won't find the full text in here. If you want to see the full text, what you do, look around, it's usually on the right side. There'll be a button where you can go and find the, the full text. And sometimes it's here, and really, to be honest with you, sometimes it's not here. Let's see if it's really here. So we click there. It's going to take us to this other website where the full text should be here and you have to kind of look around for it. Let's see if we can find it. So we have another abstract there. Let's see if they give us the actual full text. Okay, And it's saying here we need to log in to read the full text. So this is one I want to purchase this article. So this one would cost $32. This is what I find a lot 
with, with PubMed. It tells you the full text is there and it's not. Let's go back. There was another link though. It gave it, let's try this one here. Because it gave us several links to try to find the full text. It's kind of an obstacle course with PubMed. Okay, so right here, if we look around a little bit, here's the, the abstract. If we look around, there's the full text right there. Let's see if it actually is, is going to give it to us. Okay, so it actually gave us the full text. There's a 20 page article. You could download that right there. You could print it out. Everything you normally would do with a PDF. So there's your full article. Let's go back here. And we'll, so that's, that's how you get the, the full text. You have to kind of look around a little bit sometimes. I'm going to close that. Now, un unfortunately, with, with PubMed, there isn't a citation maker. So if you're going to have to cite these, you're probably going to have to cite them in APA format. Most medical classes and science classes, psychology classes, most of the sciences, including the medical classes, require APA format instead of MLA. And there is not, at least the, not that I can find, I, I can't find a citation builder within here. So you're going to just have to put together the citation using your APA manual. I'll put together another video to try to help you a little bit with that, but unfortunately there isn't any quick way into that. Let me go back here to the search. <coughs> Let's go into another article and take a look and see if we can find it. So here we go, and again, the full text should be right there on the right. See if we, let's see if it's actually there. It's always a question with PubMed if it, to see if it's actually there. Okay, I'm not going to fill out their survey. Let's go in here and let's see. Let's click this PDF right there. There we go, they gave it to us. It's an 11 page article, and there is the full article. You can save it here. You could print it out. You can do whatever you would do generally with, uh, with uh, an, an article. Let's close this here and let's go back to the search. So that's that's kind of that's a an, an, an introduction to how you to how you would you would do um, searches in PubMed. The one thing to that I have found that's interesting. Let's go back to the search here. One thing that, that's interesting is those those limits that I put on the, on the last search are still going to be active for all future searches, which may be good or may be bad. Any future searches I do when I go back to that advanced search screen within this session are still going to have just the free full text, which is good. It's going to be limited to humans and it's going to be limited to clinical trial. Now that may be what you want or maybe not what you want. I'm going to clear those so that I can start over from scratch. And we've got the thing that's kind of interesting. We've got all this history of everything I've done on here. And you could combine these histories. You can search them again, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to start a new search here. I'm, and you don't have to do this, but I like title is a good limiter since there's, there's so many articles in here. Let me type in uh, lymphoma. And uh, let's see here. Mesh major topic, let's say alcohol. Is there any relation between lymphoma and alcohol? Do a search here. And I'm just going to do a search now. I'm not going to do the preview. I'm just going to do a search. See if anything comes back. So 131. So not, not too many. Let's see how many of these. Now we're going to go through our thing to see full text. Free full text available. Okay. So 31 of those were full text articles. Let's make sure that's with humans. So I clicked the human link. They were down to 18. I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, limit that anymore because we're down to so so many. And this is nice here. That's a good one. It's kind of leading me to the best ones here. I don't know if that one's going to have full text though. Let's let's take a look here and see if that one will have full text. Well, theoretically, we've got this little this little link here. This is where the full text would be. I'm gonna click there and see if we can find that. So it's looking for this other page. It's always gonna take you for the full text. It's always gonna take you out to a separate link, and sometimes with more success than others. This one is, as you can see, it's taking a while to load. 
me kind of move this to the side while this is loading and read a little bit about this article here. The abstract is really useful because you can really quickly, I can, I can tell what we're talking about. Let me uh, minimize this here and just let's talk about the abstract for a second. The abstract, I can, I can very quickly get an idea of what this is about. Read through this. Whether an association between alcohol drinking and non-Hodgkin lymphoma risk exists is an open question. See, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And this is a study to try to figure that out. Yeah, see, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Let's see if, um, in this link they took me to, let's see if they give me the actual article. Full text PDF, let's see. And they did. So here's this great article, which is exactly what I'm talking about. You download this here. You could print it out. So perfect, perfect. Great. It's a great database. There's there's a lot of free full text in here. You just have to kind of know how to use it. So and unfortunately, like I said, there there isn't an just an, a real easy way to cite this. But I'll talk about this in a future video how to how to do this. And then I've got my 18 here. Again, any of these that we, we click on. And so there, the interesting thing, I might want to redo this search with alcohol in the title, since that's really what I'm looking for. Now we could go back, we could go back and change it, or I'm going to try to get a little tricky here. Notice how up here the search, how it put it through there is title in the little brackets there. And I can change that here on the fly. So I'm going to change that to title. Let me redo this search now with alcohol and lymphoma in the title. Now one thing that's interesting, it kept my limits on there. So it's already searching for full text and already in humans. So these are the perfect articles. They all have my term, lymphoma and alcohol, and I just changed it on the fly up here. I didn't have to go back to the advanced search screen. And uh, let's see here. Let's open up this one. and Again, they have these links over here and you can try to get the full text sometimes you can get it sometimes it it's not there or sometimes it's trying to get you to subscribe to something let's see here download PDF and this is one another one where they're trying to get us to buy something so this one I, I do not see uh, I don't see the full text there so that's uh, Let's try this again. See if it'll, yeah, it's, see this is something you're going to run into a lot with it. But let's go back here. Let's try this one here. Let's try the second link and see if they, they give us the, uh, the full text of the second link. Click PDF. There it is. 15 page article, full text. So there you go. It's, uh, it's a great database. You just kind of have to know how to use it. So that's your introduction to PubMed, and uh, let me know if you have any questions on this. I'd be more than happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one or in groups or over the phone or through email on how to use this database. Thanks a lot. This is Jeff signing off.